Everyone talks about what's your passion, what's your passion. I, Jeff, I don't know what my passion is, mm. but I do know that I love spending time with my family. Yeah. And I love being there. So this business, which I absolutely love, I don't know if I'm passionate about buying and selling raw land, but I am passionate about what it provides me. This is the How to Quit Working Show. Jeff Steinman believes entrepreneurship is the only true path to freedom. That's why he created the How to Quit Working Show, where you'll hear stories, insights, and inspiration from lifestyle fanatics who left their soul-sucking 9-to-5 job forever. Now, here's your host, author, entrepreneur, and ultimate lifestyle fanatic, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. Today we are going to talk to Mark Pagalski. He calls himself the Land Geek. And he calls himself the Land Geek because he actually makes money by buying and selling vacant land with no buildings on it, no rats, no tenants, no none of that stuff that we normally associate with the negatives of real estate. Mark's going to tell us all how he did it, how you can do it as well. But before we get to that, I want to remind you that we have a great community over on Facebook. It's at howtoquitworking.com slash group. That will shoot you right over to Facebook where you can ask to join the community and you just have to click join group and then we'll get your request approved just as soon as we possibly can. Won't take very long. And then you can jump in the conversation and begin talking with, interacting, making friends with, maybe Maybe even doing business with some other folks just like you who know that there is another way besides working for someone else. Now, speaking of not working for someone else, let's talk to Mark, talk to Mark Podolsky, the land geek. Mark, welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. Thank you. You know, I'm excited about having you on here because one of the things that I want to do more of on the How to Quit Working Show is talk more about real estate. We have talked very little on the How to Quit Working Show about real estate, and we have a whole bunch of people out there who want to quit their jobs, they want to start a business, they want to create passive income, all of that stuff. And gosh, I mean, I feel like if you leave real estate out of that equation, that's like, you know, talking about candy but leaving out chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's funny because my background, I'm not a, a real estate guy in the traditional sense. Like, I didn't come from a realtor background. Yep. Um, you know, I flipped maybe one house and I hated it. Uh, I'm not handy. It's not something that I'm passionate about. As far as the physical aspects sure. of real estate, but because you know, and like your podcast, how to quit working. I had a terrible job. I hated my job. I was doing investment banking, and this is uh, in two thousand. And I'm stressed out. I've got a forty-five minute commute there and back. My boss is micromanaging me. I don't love the people I'm working with. I'm passionless. Right? Uh, yeah. It's basically it's basically you know dollars for hours, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. So I meet a guy that uh, the firm recently hires, and he's telling me he's going to these uh, tax sale auctions, and he's buying a property at at tax deed auctions for pennies on the dollar, and then flipping them online. And I said, okay, well, you know, what what kind of you know money we're we talking about? He's like, I'm I'm you know I'm three hundred percent making margins of three hundred percent, and I'm analyzing companies long right. Yeah. I mean, you know, probably over a thousand companies a year. A great company, Jeff. A great company has fifteen percent EBIT margins. Oh, you know, interesting. <laughs> so you're actually you're you're talking to this friend of yours who's flipping properties and making three hundred percent returns, and at the same time, you're going into the office and as part of your job as an investment bank, and you're looking at these companies, probably blue chips and all the that other kind of stuff. You're looking at these companies and you're saying <laughs> a really good company. Go ahead. Yeah, it has 15% free cash flow. Wow. The average company's got 10%, right? This guy's making 300%. Wow. So I don't believe him. So we go to an auction together. Again, I don't know how to do due diligence. I don't know how to market property. I don't know anything. All I know is that, hey, if I can buy an asset <laughs> for nothing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's probably someone on the other on the other end of it. So yeah, sure. I had like, I think like $3,000 that we'd save for car repairs. And I went to the auction. I bought ten properties, an average price of three hundred bucks a lot. Okay. And sure enough, I flipped them for over three hundred percent. 
Wow. You and only had to get like 900 bucks. 900 bucks? For a Easy. lot to get 300%. Okay. Now, yeah. now, were you married at the time? Yeah, I was married. I uh, I have a, I had a, a six-month-old baby. What and I, I said to my wife, I'm like, I'm like, I really want to do this full time. And she said, absolutely not. <laughs> so well, first of all, before we get into that, what did she think about you taking the, the car fund and going out and buying? Not, not happy, Jeff. Did she know? She, of course she knew. Okay. Not happy at all. But like, she knew before you did it. She knew before I did okay. it. <laughs> so so I she said, reluctantly I said, agreed. I said, look, worst case scenario, worst case we own land. We yeah. have an asset. Yeah. And it's not something I have to protect. It's not something I have to maintain. Um, it lasts forever. The baby could have it one day. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. It's an asset. Sure. So she said, okay, I trust you. I trust you. pretty good sales job. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. So, so, and then, you know, I flipped it. I said, look, honey, now we've got $9,000. Dang. So she's like, wow. So I said, look, there's another auction in Arizona. I want to go to that one. So I went to that auction. I spent nine grand, and I'm, I'm Jeff. I'm telling you, there's no one in the room. Oh, you I mean, put, you put all your chips back on the table, but all the back on the table <laughs> because I saw, like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. These are crazy margins, and uh, I, I I spent nine grand. I made over ninety thousand dollars in six months on that second deal. Wow. So now, so now I've got some money. That's, now that's got, more than three hundred percent now. <laughs> oh yeah, it was way more than three hundred percent. It was it was a, it was a home run. But then I went to my wife. I said, look. We've got this money. I'm going to close a deal with my investment banking job. We'll take all that money. Give me give me a year to see if I can make this thing work mm. uh, and do it full time because I hate my job. Mm -hmm. So we take all that money, and I've been buying and selling land full time since 2001. Mm. And probably my greatest uh, accomplishment is in 2008 when everything was going, you know, just horribly wrong in the economy and in real estate, I was able to ride it out. And why was I able to, to ride it out? Because I had so many notes that I was owner financing that I had cash flow coming in. And now that I have this cash flow coming in passively, I was able to buy up more property from distressed sellers. And I didn't over leverage. So um, in that sense, you know, the only thing I really had to... Uh, to adjust was just my lifestyle, and that was it. Yeah, wow. and I yeah, and I and I love it. And um, you know, I, I really think it's the ultimate passive income model because I thought about this a lot with a previous mentor of mine, and we'd always go on these car trips and we think, okay, what is the ultimate business? Mm -hmm. We say, okay, the ultimate business has to have a few characteristics. You know, it can't be physical, right? No physical inventory. Okay. Um, we wanted a one-time sale and recurring revenue, right? Okay. We wanted low competition and high margin. Okay. And we wanted um, a built-in incentive for the customer to keep on paying. And you know what we came up with? What's that? Life insurance. <laughs> Life insurance <laughs> was the ultimate business model. But it's, it's really competitive and no sure. one likes to sell it. So I think that besides life insurance... Buying and selling this raw land the way that I do it is the best passive income model there is Excellent. because it's not physical. I'm just shuffling paper. It's a one-time sale. I get recurring revenue. If I need cash, I can flip it for cash. And there's nothing to protect. I don't have any tenants, no toilets, no termites, no trash like in traditional real estate. It's basically real estate investing without the headaches. Yeah. And, what are the four T's of traditional real estate? The, the four T's of traditional real estate yeah, yeah. are, are basically, yeah. I mean, you know, you've, you've got a, you you typically have a tenant in there uh -huh. if you want, if you want the passive income. If, if you're going to flip, now you got to deal with subcontractors. You got to fix the house. Um, you know, there's all this friction involved as far as dealing with brokers, title companies. We avoid all of that. So, and and to make sure that our, our listeners understand, the thing that you do is you flip raw land. That means it's a piece of land. It doesn't have anything built on it. There is no nothing, nothing there whatsoever. So there's nothing for termites to eat. There's no there's no tenors in it because there's no rental property. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing to repair. There's no leaks because it's just a piece of land. Exactly. There's nothing there. So yeah. all we do is we send out lowball offers to people that owe back taxes. 
and live out of state. They're not emotionally, mm. uh, you know, they're not emotional about the property. They live out of state. They're not visiting it. And they're, they're advertising to the world they don't value it. When we don't value something, we don't pay for it, right? Okay. So they're not, paying, so, they're not paying their property taxes. So this so, is interesting. So you, you're really specific about who you approach about buying property. So you say, first of all, now do you do this primarily in your area? No, I do it all throughout the country. I like the Southwest and Florida. Okay. Mainly. Okay. Yeah. So so you find a piece of property, a vacant piece of land, and you know when I drove into my office today, I probably drove by, you know, thirty of them. Right. You find a vacant piece of land, and you identify a piece of land that has two characteristics. Number one, it has back taxes, and right. then you know that there's some, there's potentially some issues. There's potentially some, uh, some financial issues, maybe some distress. And the second thing that you look for is that that owner of the property lives out of state. So, and it sounds like what you're saying is that. If they live out of state, you get the indication that they're not emotionally attached to it. Maybe it's not right next to their house, or maybe it's not you know a piece of land that they're planning to build on because they don't live around here. Is that right? Absolutely. You got it, Jeff. How exactly. do you find it? How do you find these things? So you, you have to contact the county treasurer. Okay. And you get the back tax list or the delinquent tax sale lists, and you start making offers. Now, don't, now, to get those lists, do you have to have some kind of special connections? Do you know people in high places? No, you just email the treasurer, you call them, and you say, do you have this list? And it's public information. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, it's, so it's a win-win-win, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a win for the person that, that owes back taxes because now we're, sol- we're solving um, a financial problem for them. Okay. With their asset has now become a liability. Yeah. Right. So we solve that issue for them. We solve an issue for the county. Because now they're taking, we're taking a, an asset that's not producing any, uh, revenue for the county. And we, and we're now putting it into the hands of a new owner that is going to pay the taxes on that property. Hypothetically, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And it's a win for ourselves and our family because we're making money as well on the transaction by providing this needed service. So I would imagine having done this as long as you have, you have probably built some relationships with certain counties. There's probably counties that you you call up and you say, hey, Rose, how's it going? Uh, It's been, you know, two weeks since we talked. You got the latest list. And she says, hey, Mark, great to talk to you again. Let me shoot that right over to you. Yeah, exactly. Also, <laughs> okay. It's, it's, you know, it now, it's at the point now I, I have systems in place. Okay. So, you know, my virtual assistants are doing that. Excellent. But I have my favorite counties, and we know the areas really well. And we know what we want to pay for these properties. We know how quickly they'll sell. We know what they'll sell for. We know how to sell them. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, I challenge you, Jeff, to find a better Passive income model. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, so once you once you find the property, and uh, what what do you do when you find a so you find a property and you say, okay, I think this one this is a good one. Then what do you what do you do next? Okay, so you know basically then we have to do our due diligence, right? right. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that there's what we call ingress and egress, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we we can actually access the property so legally. a way to get in and out right so right. attached to yeah. a road somehow okay yeah yeah either there's a road or uh, we can get an easement if we have to blade a road we want to be able to access that property okay right we also want to make sure that there are the attributes that a, another buyer would want i mean how deep do we have to go for water mm. right okay is, so is it potable okay. can we get water um so those are the, those are two big things and then what's compelling about the property is there are we are we close to amenities? Mm. Do we have mountain views? Are there any streams or lakes? Is you know are there anything with water nearby? People love water, right? So we want to get the full picture of that property, and we want to then find out okay who is our ideal buyer for this property? Mm. And I've been doing this long enough. I mean, you would think that property that you and I would consider out in the middle of nowhere, yeah, no one would want. That's not true. People love that property. There's, I don't know if you've heard of that show, uh, National Geographic Preppers. No, I don't remember that. Never saw it's, that. it's, I mean, millions of people watch this show, but basically it's about survivalists. Okay. And they want to be away from the cities. They want somewhere to bug out in case 
things go wrong. Ah. And these types of properties are perfect for them. Oh, there's just people that don't want to be near other people. Yeah. They want to have property that has no restrictions. Um, or they just want to have it as an investment because they know that, you know, the taxes are, are low. And who knows? One day, maybe it will be in the path of growth. And, you know, everyone's heard that story. You know, their their grandfather bought property out in the sticks 30 years ago, and then they become a multimillionaire overnight mm-hmm. because development comes in. So there's a lot of those types of people as well. I think one of the most important things for folks to realize about real estate is you've got to let you got to pull your personal preferences out of it, right? There's certain, you know, in, in my region here, there's areas that I want to live and there's areas that I don't want to live. And it has to do with the proximity to things that I like to do. It has to do with walkability. It has to do with a lot of things. But just because you don't want to live somewhere or you don't want to own a specific piece of land does not mean that nobody else does. And I think that's a really important lesson for folks to realize when they're getting into real estate. Yeah, I can't tell you how many thousands upon thousands of dollars I lost in the beginning of my business because I thought it was junk property. Mm. And, you know, my buddy's like, well, you know, you're not the buyer, Mark. I'm like, no, 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 no one's going to want this. Yeah. It's like, he's like, look, trust me. And he'd show me. And he would like actually tease me about it. He's like, look, I just sold this property. I just sold this property. I just sold that property. I'm like, fine. You're right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but you're right. I mean, I've got a, a, a realtor friend and she's like, Mark, there's a pig for every barn. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's true. Yeah. It's true. So um, yeah. it's, a, it's a great lesson to learn. And, and, and it applies to all types of businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's all kinds of businesses out there, Mark, that you and I would never set foot in. No. But all kinds of people do. That doesn't mean it's not a viable. Doesn't mean it's not a viable business. So, Mark, once you found this piece of property, you got this great piece of property. You you bought it for three hundred bucks, and you want to sell the thing for I don't know, probably five million. Whatever you do, <laughs> how do you right. go about finding that buyer that's going to buy it from you? How do okay? So how do how do I market? Right. Yep. Yep. So there's there's a couple places that you can go and and market the property. And the and the, and the first one that's obvious and is free is Craigslist, mm. right? But then after Craigslist, you've got all these sites that are paid. I mean, maybe, you know, it's not expensive, maybe 20 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month, something like that. There's landwatch.com. There's landflip.com. There's landandfarm.com. Uh, there's landsofamerica.com. And these, these people just specialize in hooking up sellers and buyers and sellers for land. Oh, excellent. Okay. So you, you want to go where your market is. Yeah. Yeah. So there's sites specifically, it sounds like designed for like farming people who are interested in finding farmland uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. Did you ever use like the MLS? I don't use the MLS because the properties that are on the MLS are typically single family homes, right? Okay. Okay. Now for raw land, I mean, typically, you know, in my niche, you're not going to see on the MLS a $5,000 piece of property, right? Mm. And, and the main reason is brokers can't make any money listing these types of properties, right? Uh, so these, these are sure. deals that, you know, I, I buy for sale by owner, I sell them for sale by owner, and that's my niche. Yeah, I mean, you could still do this, this, the same concepts that um, I do would apply to a million dollar ranch, mm-hmm. and then you could put that on the MLS sure, um, and do all those types of things. But, um, you know, I, I like to mitigate my risk. Yeah. Well, and the important thing about your business and the thing I think that's made it so successful is you have been very specific about carving out a really specific niche that is exactly what you do. And, it, and you figured out how to do it. And you've been doing it for, what, 13, 14 years now? So you've got it Yeah, 14 out. years. Yeah. I, I, I've got it locked in. Well, congratulations on that. Thanks. Thanks. What is kind of the biggest tip that you would want to give somebody who's out there listening and working a full-time job and they're saying, you know what, this land flipping thing, this sounds pretty cool. I think I'm going to get started. Yeah. So, I mean, I think people should start doing it the way I did it. Don't Mm -hmm. quit your job, but certainly start doing this part-time. So I I bought and sold land for 18 months before I quit my job Mm -hmm. because I had to, I just had to know, right? I'm very risk averse. 
You know, I'm from St. Louis, like you. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, we're, the show we're, me state. We're the show me state, and exactly. So I had to see it for myself first. So, uh, and the second thing is, don't make the mistake I did, and not have a mentor or someone there mm. to ha- help guide you that's already been through it. Because when I started, I, I was I didn't really have anybody, mm. and um, I had you know, I had to figure it out myself, and and you know, I have thousands upon thousands. And you could argue millions of dollars worth of mistakes mm-hmm. um, because I didn't kn- I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. So definitely, um, you know, spend the time uh, and the energy getting educated and learn the various aspects of the business. You've got to learn about due diligence, right? You've got to learn about deal flow. You've got to learn about marketing, and then you don't want to build yourself. You don't want to create another job for yourself. So you're going to have to create systems with virtual assistants, right? 90% of what I do is outsourced. And um, so we have systems in place for every aspect of the business. And that way, you know, you you can really start um, building something for yourself that can really help you get from where you are now, which might be a job you hate to doing something that you really, really love and are passionate about. Right. Amazing. And, you know, money and passive income solves a lot of those problems. Amazing, amazing stuff. On this entrepreneurial journey that you've taken, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've had to learn? Boy, the biggest lesson I've learned. There's a lot of them, Jeff. <laughs> I love how this question always stumps everybody because there's so many. <laughs> there's so There's so many. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is you've got to constantly, you got to fail fast. I'll say that mm. you got to constantly try new things and, and fail, mm. right? Sure. Try this marketing channel and, and you got to move fast in business. Um, and then I think the other biggest lesson I've learned is, uh, you know, find people who are doing, what you, or, or have done what you want to do and and learn from them. Absolutely. You know, don't don't uh, don't try to blaze your own path <laughs> if you don't have the experience in it. Yeah. And yeah. someone else does, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What's your life like now that you've built this business that's working really well for you? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. I I have a seven minute commute to my office now. Okay. Um, so I have, you, you have an office outside the home. I have an office outside the home, but when I first okay. started, I, I did work out, outside the I did work in my house. Okay. And then, um, you know, the kids got too loud and I had to get in the office. <laughs> so, you know, I have three kids and, you know, everyone talks about what's your passion, what's your passion. I, Jeff, I don't know what my passion is, mm. but I do know that I love spending time with my family. Yeah. And I love being there. So this business, which I absolutely love, I don't know if I'm passionate about buying and selling raw land, but I am passionate about what it provides me, which is spending time with my family, being able to take vacations. When I get back from vacation, I have more money in my bank account than when I left. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and so those types of things, I think that is really what kind of allows me a sense of of happiness. And, And plus, you know, helping other people as well. Sure. Sure. Well, and one of the things that I think is so cool about real estate, and you mentioned a little bit about this, is that you're helping so many people along the way. You're helping the seller. You're, help, you're helping the county. You And indirectly, you're helping you know many residents of the county. And you're helping the buyer to get a hold of that piece of land that they want uh, in case the world comes to an end or to build a house on or for whatever reason that they want that piece of property. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's affordable land. Everybody thinks... You know, land costs millions of dollars. I mean, Jeff Bezos, uh, CEO of Amazon, is one of the largest landholders in the country. Ted Turner. I mean, you know, we always think, okay, billionaires own a lot of land. Stan mm-hmm. Kroenke from Walmart, mm-hmm. uh, one of the largest landholders in the country. But, you know, there's people out there. If you look at raw land, in, even in St. Louis, you might say, oh, my gosh, it's so expensive. But the way that we buy it and the way that we flip it, it's affordable for everybody, especially when we do owner financing terms on easy terms. It's really the, the secret to the sauce of my business is making the property irresistible. You mm. have to. Can you tell our listeners really quick what owner financing means? So owner financing means, let's say that we buy a 40-acre parcel 
for five thousand dollars, right? Okay. And partial is kind of like the legal word for a chunk of land. Right, right. Exactly. Uh, For chunk of land, for piece of property. And then you want to sell that property for, let's say the the market value for that property today is $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. So we buy it for five. Today the market value is 10, but someone doesn't have $10,000 cash. But what they do have is a car payment. So they could put, say, $1,000 down. Mm. And then we could finance them at two forty nine a month, at let's say eight point seven percent, and then the price becomes twenty thousand dollars because of time value of money. Yeah. If we go out fifteen years, let's say, right? Yeah. Because in fifteen years we could argue the property is going to be worth a lot more than twenty thousand dollars. Absolutely. And yeah, and that's how we do it. And when you keep it at a car payment, it's pretty much affordable for everybody. And according to my math, in about in that example you gave, in about sixteen months, you have your money back. Correct, correct. I personally like to get my money out within twelve months. Okay, but so okay, yeah, but so, you know, so normally the terms would be different for a real deal. But yeah, right, right. I mean, I've, I've got yeah, I've got people that I work with, you know, students of mine. You know, they started from zero, and and you know now they're approaching ten thousand dollars a month in passive income. And once you had to hit that that level, you know, life becomes real interesting for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. speak now. You one of the pieces of advice that you gave us was learn from somebody who has already done this. Is there a way? Do you have a way to? And you mentioned students. Do you have a way that you can help our listeners? Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, besides my own uh, company of buying and selling land, I do have a uh, a teaching course where I help people learn how to do what I do. And that's at uh, thelandgeek.com. So if you go to www.thelandgeek.com, you can get the Passive Income Blueprint, and you can get our ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And uh, Jeff, you're on my podcast. We talk a lot about uh, all this on the podcast. So there's tons of free resources as well. But if you really want to accelerate and get to the next level, we do have a, a home study course as well, and there's coaching, and there's all, you know, the whole gamut of, of services. It just depends on, on you, really. Excellent. Well, our, you can go to thelandgeek.com and get more information about all of that stuff. Mark, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing so generously everything that you've learned, and thanks for inspiring our listeners because I think a lot of folks out there don't know what their passion is. And I think one of the things that you brought to the table is it's great to know your passion. It's great to build a business around your passion. But you know what? Sometimes you just want to make some damn money so you can spend time with your family. And you've done that successfully. I congratulate you. And I thank you for being here, and I wish you the best of luck with everything in the future. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. You see how simple it can be? Business doesn't have to be this big, complicated, crazy headache that it's hard and requires all kinds of complexity. It can just be really simple. I mean, look, Mark just goes out and finds these parcels, and he buys them, and then he finds somebody who is willing to pay more than he did. It's really quite simple. Not that it's easy, not that Mark hasn't done a lot of hard work, and not that he doesn't work very hard, but his business is relatively simple, and I wanted to show you what it, you know, that it's possible to create really simple businesses that make plenty of money and let you have the lifestyle that you have always wanted. And speaking of the lifestyle you have always wanted, I don't know many people in this world who are more devoted to lifestyle than Heather Osgood, the How to Quit Working Coach. If you'd like to have her experienced mind and her experience Experience guiding you along the way as a mentor on your how to quit working journey. Go to howtoquitworking.com slash coaching and get more information about how to quit working coaching and set up a complimentary session with Heather. Again, howtoquitworking.com slash coaching. Well, how about this? How about next time on the How to Quit Working show, we'll talk to another amazing entrepreneur just like you who's created an amazing life of freedom and we'll do it all again. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working show. Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.